IFC entities can be further described by having them reference external sources of information such as a classification system. This classification system can group or classify the objects further. Within IFC, elements can be referenced back to a classification system. There are two main methods to assign classifications to an object within Revit, and both of these involve adding a number of parameters where the values must be entered in with a particular syntax. Revit allows for only one classification system to be fully defined within the IFC export, so we'll be using Uniclass 2015, a classification system developed in the United Kingdom. Firstly, I need to add some project parameters to the elements within my model. I have added some project parameters here. They are just project parameters defined and named by myself, as there are no standard classification parameters within the IFC export shared parameter file. I have a parameter which is associated to the project information for the building, classifications for the spaces or Revit rooms, classification for the system, and this has been applied to system families, or compounded components such as floors, walls, roofs, etc. And another parameter for products, which will be individual families or off-the-shelf products such as chairs, sinks, wash basins, etc. These are all added in at the type level. So I'll firstly go to the project information and I've added the parameter under the data group. It is not imperative that it's placed in the ISC parameters. So this can be segregated more easily. For the building classification, I'll use the entities table within Uniclass 2015. And it's very important that there is a particular syntax used when adding in the classification values. Firstly, I need to type in the identification attribute, and this holds the key for a specific reference to a classification item. In this case, I will use the Uniclass 2015 code. I then need to have a space, semicolon, space, and then I can type in the name attribute, which holds a human readable description of the key. So here I'll simply type art exhibition buildings, which is the corresponding description or name for this particular code. Select OK. I'll now go to a floor plan and I can select the reception room and in the classification parameter I can type in the identification code space semicolon and then the name or description of that classification identification. I can now select a floor, for example, this external finish. Go to edit type. And in the classification uniclass system parameter, I'll type in the identification code with the space semicolon and then the description. And then for the Barcelona chair, because this is a product, I will be using the product code. So I can paste the product code, space, semicolon, and then type the name. Like so. Once I've classified all the relevant elements in the model, including the rooms, 
I can go to File, Export, IFC, and in the Modify Setup, I'll go to Property Sets. I can then define the classification settings in here. I can define the name of the classification system, so Uniclass 2015, the source or publisher, the NBS. Because the different types of classification, such as the systems, products, entities and spaces, are all different tables and are updated at different points in time, I will paste the different table versions with inside this value. The addition date I will keep as today's date. The documentation location I will specify as the website. And then the classification field name is the Revit parameter that contains the classification values. So for example, for this model, for the building or the entity, it is classification uniclass entity. I can then separate it with a comma and space. I can type the value for the space. And then for the system and product. Note that only one parameter per object can be exported. So I could not have two parameters for the classification for at the type level for, for example, a piece of furniture. It will only export one parameter. I'll click OK and OK to close the Modify Setup dialog box. I will then export and override and replace the IFC file. Then back in the IFC viewer, I can select, for example, this floor. And under the classifications tree, I now have an IFC classification reference with the identification attribute and name attribute. See how the identification and name have been split from the single parameter in Revit using that particular syntax with the semicolon. The location has been exported as the URL link, which I can click and it will open up in a web browser. And I also have the IFC classification entity as the reference source with the source, the edition, and the name of that IFC classification. I could go and select this chair. It has an identification attribute and name attribute for the classification reference, linking back to the NBS Uniclass 2015. The same for the shelving component and the columns, etc. So this is how to reference elements to an IFC classification through the IFC classification reference from Revit. I now want to add another couple of classification systems to group my elements. Because these other classification systems will not be part of Uniclass 2015, I cannot include them as part of the IFC exporter classification settings, and therefore I will not be allowed to export them with the referenced source IFC classification I have just created. Revit, however, allows specific parameters to be added to the project that will automatically export classification references, but without this associated referenced source. I'll go to Project Parameters, and I will select Add. I'll go to the shared parameter file 
and I'm going to add these classification codes as type parameters. So I will make sure that I have the type shared parameter file selected for the shared parameters. If I scroll down, there are a number of parameters called classification code and then classification code two, three, four, five. If I use these parameters, these will automatically export the values that are placed within the parameters to an IFC classification reference. So I will select this classification code and add it to the data category or group. I will then add it to a number of Revit categories that I have placed in my model. This is not an exhaustive list, it's just the elements that are within my model. And some other common categories. I can now add the classification to parameter for a separate classification system. Once I've selected the categories, I can select OK and OK. If I select on this floor and select Edit Type, I have the two parameters available now. I can now type in the identification value for the classification key, so 3.2 and then a space semicolon and then the name or the descriptive value for that key so the syntax matches the previous classification however what I can now do is I can add the classification name to the beginning of this classification so I'll use square brackets and then I'll type in NRM1 for new rules of measurement 1 and then square brackets to close and then a space. I also have a second classification code parameter here that will be used for my client specific coding system that I'm required to assign to each element. So I can just type in the name of the classification system, so just for example client classification and then I can type in the identification or the key semicolon and then external floor finish and I can now do that for a number of elements within my model and then once done I can re-export to IFC If I now select on the floor element in the IFC viewer, I can now see under the covering and the classifications heading, I have three classification references. The first one, I can see the name is the client classification and the identification is the code and the name of the classification reference is the human readable description. Note that I cannot export or assign the addition or the source to this IFC classification, but the name has successfully been exported due to the syntax I placed within the parameter value in Revit. The second IFC classification reference is the Uniclass 2015 defined through the IFC exporter settings. And then the third classification reference is to NRM1 using the classification code parameter. So this is how to export classification reference attributes and IFC classification entities to IFC from Revit.
just a final note. It doesn't matter whether the classification code parameters or type or instance, you should use the classification code instance parameter if you wish to define the classification reference on an element by element basis. But note that I cannot now add the instance for classification code parameter. I would need to add the classification code 3 instance parameter. Like so.